Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my brand new show called Fandemonium with Chris Avalon. I am your host, Chris Avalon. And for this segment, what I'm going to be doing is stepping out of the things that I normally do. Now, for those of you who follow me um, on AllDigitalRadio.com every week, I do a podcast where I talk about celebrity news and gossip. And I do music interviews, well, not music interviews, but music reviews and things of that nature on Tribe, T-R-V-B-E dot com. And I also break down entertainment news and stuff in that way. But with this show, which I was just thinking of names and stuff, so Fandemonium with Chris Avalon. This is basically me coming at you from a fan perspective of things that I pretty much like, which would be movies and television and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, that's basically what this show was about. And there's a couple of topics that I found really interesting, of course. Um, I know it's been a while since I've done a YouTube video, but I wanted to get back into that now that I have a lot of time on my hands and I'm currently under quarantine like majority of America and beyond. So, um, it's a couple of topics that I was scrolling through throughout the past couple of days, especially today. There was a lot of really good, interesting stories that came out, um, that I wanted to talk about and you guys chime in and give your, um, comments and all the other stuff pretty much be, um, I would say, um, don't hesitate to do that as well. I'd like to know your opinion on some of the topics I'm going to come up with, which you'll see um, that's listed at the bottom of this video. Um, Also, don't be afraid to click like and subscribe if you like pretty much what you hear and and see and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into the topics because it's a lot of topics and I don't want to like stretch this thing out for a long period of time. So here we go. First topic I want to talk about is basically... um, something that came out with Sony. Now, Sony has pretty much revealed that majority of the movies that they had coming out this year, they're delaying due to you-know-who. Because, you know, if you say its name, you get demonetized. Kind of like Candyman. Say the name five times, he comes to gut you with a hook. But in this case, um, you say that certain name of that certain virus that's going around killing a lot of people and hospitalizing a lot of people and putting a lot of people out of work, um, you get demonetized. So I don't want to do that, so you know what I'm talking about. Just read between the lines. So Sony has pretty much moved a lot of their movies to different dates. So the films that they've actually moved are the ones that are the following. It's uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife has moved from July 10th, 2020 to March 5th, 2021. Jared Leto's Morbius has been pushed from July 31st to March 19th, 2021. Um, Tom Holland's video game adaptation of Uncharted went from March 5th, 2021 to October 8th. 2021 and peter rabbit 2 um moved from august 7th of this year to january 15th of next year um i have some thoughts on that okay the movies that i was really looking forward to seeing was actually ghostbusters afterlife i'm a fan of the original ghostbusters ghostbusters 2 not so much i mean if you've seen it you know it's kind of like how we kind of look at the mortal Kombat films we love the first one hate the second one although ghostbusters 2 wasn't as bad as Mortal Kombat Annihilation, but you get what I'm saying. Um, So, yeah, I was looking forward to Ghostbusters. I was also looking forward to Morbius. Hated that poster. The one that just came out a couple of days ago. You can pretty much look it up online and see the poster if you don't know what I'm talking about. I do not like that poster. It looks a little cheap. The whole little streak of the monster vampire side of him, I don't like it. So I'm hoping that they work on that and change it. But I don't pretty much like the poster. If you guys like the poster, that's great. Me, personally, I don't like it. Um, Peter Rabbit 2, who gives a shit about fucking Peter Rabbit? Like, I mean, that's not up my alley. I'm sure that's, like, for little kids. I don't even know how well the original Peter Rabbit did. But, um, they moved it. Now, Uncharted, I'm kind of on the fence about it. I don't know how I feel, honestly, about, um, Tom Holland playing Nathan Drake. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of, um video game adaptations coming out. I'm looking forward to God of War whenever they can get that off the ground. Um, And The Last of Us. The Last of Us is supposed to be made into a TV series on HBO. I'm looking forward to seeing that, but I'm hoping they give us something different because I feel like after 10 seasons of The Walking Dead, like what new can you give us about someone walking to a wasteland um, and after being plagued by an incurable virus? So it'll be interesting to see what HBO does with that series. But overall, um, Ghostbusters Have Life, I'm, you know what? Um, I know a lot of people are pretty much upset about it. I mean, an, and a, even a friend of mine who works at AMC was pretty much saying when this story came out yesterday, it was like, well, what's going to happen with movies now? Like, um, what are we going to have to promote? I mean, so far, Candyman's still coming out. I don't know. They might move that because it's supposed to come out in June. 
Um, they moved Wonder Woman to August. So I'm in my gut. I don't want to go by that president, the guy that's pretending to be the president and going around saying that, well, we need to kind of like, you know, I'm going to give a date on stuff or I'm feeling like this is the time when we should start opening stuff. But I'm hoping by mid to late July, early August that we can start getting back into the routine of things. Um, so, yeah. I'm really hoping that we can get into the routine of things again. I hope that, um, you know, some of the movies that I'm really looking forward to, like uh, Halloween, please do not delay that movie. I'm really looking forward to that movie coming out in October. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, summer is pretty much done. Like, we haven't even gotten summer yet. It doesn't seem like we're going to get any movies this summer that are going to be. Um, and I know the theaters are, I mean, they're already hurting, but they're going to hurt even more because... They were looking forward to these summer movies coming out. And I felt in my gut like, okay, this was going to be the year that we'd get some really good superhero or blockbuster films that was coming out in 21. Because 2020 wasn't a really good year, in my opinion, for movies. So, um, with that being said, I guess we're just sitting on pins and needles and just going to have to watch old films and films that have come out already and catch up on films that we kind of just turn our nose at. Um, and... That's that. One of them being one I'm about to talk about, which is uh, Hellboy. So um, I didn't... I tried watching Hellboy, the new one, last year. But I got 20 minutes into it. I watched it illegally. Don't judge me. But I'm sure, like, look, millions of us do that. So <laughs> it is what it is. Whatever. Um, I watched 20 minutes of that remake of a reboot of Hellboy did not like it turned it off but of course being under quarantine and you trying to find shit to watch I was like let me just turn the movie on let me watch it let me see what's what and I watched it and I still didn't like it but I sat through it and watched the whole damn thing first of all Daniel Day Kim's British accent god awful I was expecting way more from you as an actor but I don't know what the hell that was and how you got away with that especially with um the guy who directed it was, I forget his name, Neil Marshall. He directed a couple of movies that I've actually liked. I like Dog Soldiers. That's a classic. Um, it's a cult hit. I think it's on Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you can pretty much look it up if you haven't seen it. Um, also, um, he did a movie that I watched the other day that I was like, you know what? This movie wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, Doomsday with Rona Mitro, which she was playing like this Snake Plissken type character, and they go into Scotland. They're trying to find a cure for the Reaper virus. That movie played homage to a lot of films that I loved back in the day, like Escape from New York and um, things of that, and films like that, and zombie films and that sort of thing. Um, I liked it, but even though it bombed, we know it bombed at the box office, but still, it was like it's like one of those films that's a guilty pleasure. It's not one of those horrible films that's like, oh my god, this movie's terrible, I can't watch it. You can actually watch it. There's parts of it I liked, parts of it I didn't like. It had that Mad Max vibe, that sort of thing. So it was paying homage to a lot of those films that I grew up on. But overall, it's an enjoyable film. I liked it. And I always like watching action movies where we have female characters who kick ass. Good or bad. I mean, I like my Resident Evil movies. And even though they're not that great, but I watch them. So, um, yeah. So David Harbour, who is the new Hellboy, not Guillermo del Toro. He took over the, I mean, Guillermo del Toro. Um, Guillermo del Toro did the original one. Uh, Ron Perlman played Hellboy in the original Guillermo del Toro version. So um, David Harbour basically went on his Instagram and blamed fans for why the movie did not do so well. And here's what he said. Um, he wrote, people didn't want us to make the movie. And he went on to say the following... Hold on, hold on, hold on. He was like, Guillermo del Toro and Ron Perlman created this iconic thing that we thought could be reinvented. And then they certainly, the loudness of the internet was like, we do not want to you to touch this. And when we made a movie that I think is fun and I think had its problems, but was a fun movie, and then people were just very, very against it. Now, I think he does have a point in certain areas, and I think he doesn't have points in other areas. Now, the points where he, I do agree was that, okay, when the film, we first heard about it, um, the trailers came out, all of the stuff, people did kind of go like, oh, I don't want to see this movie, this movie sucks, because Ron Perlman's not in it, and Guillermo del Toro's not directing it, da, 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 da. You know, the same typical fandomonium bullshit. Um, 
I saw the trailer. I thought the movie looked like crap. I thought it looked cheap. And first of all, if anything coming out of Lionsgate, like we've seen better things come out of Lionsgate. But for the fact, but just I just felt like they didn't really a hundred percent put enough behind this film to make it successful what it was. And then I heard stories that the director and a producer were butting heads with um, putting like on which direction they wanted the movie to go. And when I watched it, it did feel like two different movies. Um, I. Even though I like Mila Jovovich, she just did not fit as a villain in this film. Um, it was all over the place. It didn't make sense. It was confusing in a lot of ways. The special effects looked crap. Crappy. I said look crap. <laughs> the special effects looked a little crappy. I didn't particularly like a lot of special So there were certain things about it. I, I, well, not even certain things. A lot of things I didn't like about the movie. So it was a disappointment. And I don't think for a while or maybe a long... I won't even say a while. I don't even know if... I mean, would people be interested in seeing a... Another Hellboy movie. I don't know. Um, I know it after this movie didn't do so well, it'll probably be a while before they make another one. But um, my thing is with him, I don't think you should just blame fans for this. Yeah, at first, fans will complain about a movie, their favorite character being remade. Me, I used to be one of those people. Now I'm at a point, I was like, you know what? Make the movie you want to make. It's not up to me. I don't have the control. I don't have the money. I don't have the power. You're going to remake movies, these movies regardless. So when you remake them, we have a choice on whether we support them or we don't support them. And if the movie sucks, we always have the original film to go back to. It's kind of like how many times they try to make The Crow and it never happened. We can always sit and love that Brandon Lee Crow movie. We don't acknowledge the other ones. And we tend to do that a lot. It's like with certain X-Men films. I hated the last X-Men movie. But there's certain things, there's certain chapters in that franchise that I can hold on to and look at and be like, you know what? I like these movies. We're going to ignore the other ones. So we have that ability now that you can create different timelines and create different characters and create different things and just love those films and ignore the other ones. So we'll just love the two Hellboy movies and just pretend this one never existed. And I feel like maybe, I mean, on one hand, you can blame the fans and say like, well, they hurt the film in a way. But at the end of the day, if the movie would have gotten great reviews, if people were, if the fans would have, some of those fans, the curious ones who bitched, but still went to the movies to support it, would have went to see them like, you know what? I watched the movie and I said what I said in the beginning, um, but the movie wasn't bad. I actually liked it. If that word of mouth would have gotten out, I really feel like those other fans would have came along and supported those films. But that didn't happen because a lot of the fans was like, you know what? The movie sucks. Um, it's not a good film. It is what it is. And that, I believe, hurt the film. So I don't think you can just blame the fans because at the end of the day, you need those fans to support the films. And if you don't do the movie justice based on the comic book and and or at least take elements of the comic book and elevate it to make it cinematic worthy then the fans aren't going to sit around and support it so it is what it is and um i guess david harbour will just have to find another franchise to be a part of and he has he's gonna he's doing what stranger things season four whenever that i don't know how far along if they've even started filming and all this stuff he also is has a part in black widow so I don't know what role he plays in. I mean, well, I know what role he plays, but I don't know, like, the extent of, okay, is he killed off in this film? Will he appear in future sequels? So we don't necessarily know, like, how you know how much of a part his character plays in Black Widow. So for now, you have another franchise to look forward to. You have Black Widow, unless they killed you off. So just stick with that and go for other things and if they call back and want to make another Hellboy movie then hopefully they'll make it better than this one you were just in. Okay so now the next story that I want to get to is basically a rumor that's going around that Jamie Lee Curtis is set to appear in the new Mandalorian season that's supposed to be that's already been shot and it's coming up later this year I think November of this year is when um, we're supposed to get the second season of the Mandalorian and word on the street is that she's going to be in it um Nobody knows what the role is going to be, but um, according to Making Star Wars Darnet, dot net, sorry, um, she was spotted on the Mandalorian Season 2 set and could be making an appearance on the Disney Plus live action Star Wars series. So it hasn't been confirmed by any reliable sources, only except for Making Star Wars. And I've heard that Making Star Wars is usually on point when it comes to a lot of the stories that they talk about. But if she's been spotted on set and she has a role, I think that'd be a great idea. I've been a fan 
of Jamie Lee Curtis for as long as I've even been aware of her career. Like, Halloween, though for those who know me, is, like, one of my all-time favorite horror movies. I mean, I love horror movies, but Halloween is always the top horror movie in my life that I just love. And then, you know, I'm really excited for Halloween Kills. I cannot wait till that movie comes out. I heard it's really gory. I heard it's a lot of action. I don't think she has, in my opinion... Um, a big role in this one. I believe that her and her daughter and her granddaughter will have a bigger part in Halloween Ends because I think that movie will be more about them. But in my, from what I've been hearing and my my gut feeling is that um, this film will be more about those other characters within Haddonfield and those who have encountered Michael Myers in the past, how they were affected because Jamie Lee Curtis has said this film was about trauma. So how other people have been traumatically affected by Michael Myers in their life. So we had like the nurse from the first movie, how she was affected. You have Tommy Doyle, how he was affected because she babysat him as a kid, Laurie Strode. And um, what was it? Lindsay. Lindsay, who was played by um, Kyle Richards from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, how her character was affected. And I heard she's really good in this role. So I'm looking forward to the trailer whenever they release that. And Jason Blum has confirmed that they've, they've been tweaking the trailer and it looks really good. And hopefully we'll be getting that pretty soon. I'm thinking we're getting that in June, which would make sense because then you have four months to promote this movie, which is basically why I should, I forgot to mention why they delayed these other Sony movies because if they're supposed to be coming out this summer, right around now would be the time that they would be promoting these films and you can't promote with the trailers and all the other stuff and, and, the, and creating posters and getting the actors out there to properly promote without having to do everything via Skype or, you know, any other streaming thing that everybody's having to resort to in order to promote their, their recent work. Um, now you have to figure out how to make all of that work. So they I don't think Hollywood wants to take that kind of risk because it costs a lot of money to promote these movies. So it makes sense that they delayed those films. And by June, which hopefully will have, hopefully, fingers crossed, will have the world up and running again, that um, will they'll be able to properly promote these films. And then by October, of course, the the everything will be pretty much set in place. Then we can go support the new Halloween movie. So if Jamie Lee Curtis is gonna appear in The Mandalorian season two, I'm all for it. I loved the first season of The Mandalorian. I'm kind of irritated with Disney Plus right now because I am a subscriber and I'm paying all this money every month. I mean, it's like $7, but still, it's money. And especially in these dire times, um, every penny counts. Um, with Disney Plus, you really don't have a lot of options for someone to keep this streaming service going because you only have The Mandalorian, which is your only original show. I mean, you had all these other shows, but it, doesn't, it didn't give that much of a an impact as Mandalorian. So, um, Disney Plus, y'all got still got a lot of work to do and because I know that, you know, the virus pretty much put a lot of stuff on hold and has messed things up and put a wrench in everything. So, trying to figure out how to make all this work. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So, we got plenty of time for the Mandalorian season two to premiere and if Jim Lee Curtis is in it, I'm really excited and I can't wait. So, there's another rumor that's been going around that um, they're thinking about making the next Batman movie with Robert Pattinson um, R-rated. Now, I'd be all for an R-rated version of Bat of the Batman because it's something that we haven't really seen on the big screen. We haven't really seen the Batman um, in an R-rated format, you know, especially when we've had the success of Joker. Um, but... I don't think they'll, they're going to do it. I don't think that Warner Brothers is going to take that risk with this film. I mean, they already were, what, it was like a couple of months or maybe like a month and a half or two months into shooting the new um, film over in Scotland before they, and other places before they had to shut down due to you know what. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't see an R-rated version of this movie happening. I don't because, first of all, I feel like in, in movies you can get away with a lot more. With and with action, as long as you remove like the blood, I feel like when you add nudity and you add a lot of expletives, like you curse a lot in films, and if you add blood splatter, that's what kind of makes it more gives it more of an R rated, um, an R rating. 
So I don't think that they'll do that. I think Matt Reeves will probably go the route of Batman v Superman and maybe will film extended footage that they can add the blood and they can add more of that extensive violence in there for a different cut of the film. But overall, I feel like this movie is going to be a hard PG-13. I feel like they're going to just put a lot of... I mean, I'm I'm really hoping because I heard like with... um. What's the name? Zoe Kravitz and, and a lot of the characters in the film and Robert Pattinson, how they've been training extensively. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to get more fight scenes like in Batman v Superman, where Batman went and fought those guys before he rescued Martha Kent. So I'm hoping that we get more stuff like that, with something in a range of like John Wick meets The Raid, like something gritty and really violent. Like I want that kind of fight scenes. I have not, I've yet to see that kind of Batman on the big screen. We didn't really get, like, I cannot tell you, like, as much as I like Christopher Nolan's Batman, I hated the the pace of the fight scenes in those movies because it just felt very slow and it just felt like punch, punch, <clears throat> like it was very much that. And I'm like, what kind of fucking choreography is this? Um, I think at the time we loved it because we didn't know no better. But now that it's kind of changed in the pacing on how we see fight sequences. I kind of want Batman to kind of get the justice. They, I want to see more detective Batman. I want to see less Bruce Wayne. We know about Bruce Wayne. Like we can get Bruce Wayne and Batman, but I want to see more Batman. I want to see more Batman fighting crime, being a detective, doing all that stuff. Like I want to see more and, and a lot more action. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm hoping that is the Batman that, um, Matt Reeves is going to give us. So when it comes out, I'm looking forward to it. But honestly, we don't really need an R-rating version of it. First of all, Warner Bros. wants to get as much money as humanly possible. And they'll be able to get it if you have a parent coming with the kids. But they want to be able to make sure that this film makes a shit ton of money. And um, they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, let's make it rated R. And then... um, they're not going to take that risk. So it's going to be a hard PG-13. Just take out the blood and wait until you release a Blu-ray version of it or you want to release a extended version, a three-hour version, kind of like they did Batman v Superman. You can add the blood in and do all other stuff. So hopefully they'll do it that way. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic, um, which was a rumor from We Got This Covered, which I do not believe at all, but we're going to talk about it, that um, they're looking to get rid of Jason Momoa in the Aquaman franchise and replace him. So according to sources from We Got This Cover, which I like to consider them the media fake out of the movie industry. When you've ever been to media fake out, you know, they make up a whole bunch of celebrity nonsense over there. So I never really believe the stories that comes over from here. So what they are saying is, according to the sources, the same ones who told them that Kevin Conroy was playing Kingdom Come Batman in Crisis and a Green Lantern show was coming to HBO Max, um, the studio has big plans for the underwater universe they've established. From what they understand, Momoa will remain in the role for Aquaman 2 and 3. By the time the third film concludes, though... Arthur Wolf have finally taken the throne of Atlantis and been coronated as its full-time king. These royal responsibilities will come with the realization that he can't be king of Atlantis and still continue his superheroic, superheroic duties as Aquaman, so he'll pass the mantle to a new character. Now, what they're trying to say is that character is... Um, going to be a DCU version of Young Justice's Calder. In that series, he's the son of Black Manta, though ends up being taken under Aquaman's wing as his protege and eventually leads the Young Justice team. If the movies do follow this trajectory, he could we could see Momoa remaining in the franchise beyond Aquaman 3, albeit in a supporting role rather than as a protagonist. Now, while all that sounds cool and all, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. They're not going to try to get rid of him or demote him and all that other stuff. Because, first of all, these Aquaman movies made a billion dollars. Um, Batman v Superman didn't do that. Justice League didn't do that. A lot of the DCEU movies, I hate that title, like Extended Universe. Um, I None of those DC movies did that. Aquaman did that. I honestly, there are parts of Aquaman that I like, parts of Aquaman I didn't like. I like Jason Momoa in the role. <clears throat> I think it's a breath of fresh air that they decided to go with um, something a little different and have a different type of Aquaman rather than that blonde-haired um, version that we've seen in the comics and even that they made fun of on Entourage. But um, 
I don't see it. I don't see them getting rid of him, especially when they made all this money. I feel like we'll probably see Jason Momoa in the role for as long as fans will go to the movies and support it. So we'll just have to wait and see how fans respond and um, or when they've even written a script because we don't even know James Wan if he if he's if he's even coming back for the sequel. Um, if they're gonna um, what's the sequel gonna be about? And then all that good stuff. We don't know. So we'll just have to wait and see how um, this all turns out. And as the stories develop, I'll just keep you guys posted. So um, <clears throat> the next story that I wanted to get to is basically... Dwayne Johnson has confirmed that we're getting a Hobson and Shaw 2. Now, anybody, even Helen Keller, could have told you that we're getting a sequel to Hobson and Shaw. Who didn't know this? Um, he basically went on Instagram Live and did a Q&A. This was, a, this story is via Screen Rant, by the way. The actor confirmed that it is in development. He says, we are developing now the next film, the next Hobson Shaw movie, and I'm pretty excited about it. We just got to figure out the creative right now and the direction we're going to go. Um, I agree, um, with that. Like, where could we possibly go with it? Um, as far as we know, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, I mean, you should have seen it by now. It's on HBO. Um, or just recently appeared on HBO, but it doesn't matter. It's out. People should have seen the film by now. Um, you know, Helen Mirren, um, they helped her escape from jail. Um, we saw Ryan Reynolds is going to have a major role, hopefully, in the sequels. We also, um, had that shadowy figure, um, that was in the franchise. Um... That shadowy figure, from what I've heard, is that they're trying to get Keanu Reeves to be in the sequel. Now, they tried to get Keanu Reeves, I heard, in the first one, but it didn't work out. So they had, like, this, if y'all remember, there's this shadowy figure that appears throughout the film that pretty much had Idris Elba's character, Decker. Um, was it, what was his name again? I was almost called him Decker. Decker was one of the Shaw brothers. <laughs> um, I forget, um, his name. Oh, it was Brixton. That's what his name was. I was like, damn, I almost forgot his name. Um, I've seen it twice, by the way. I actually liked Hobbs and Shaw. I thought Hobbs and Shaw was entertaining. It wasn't as great as I wanted it to be. It wasn't perfect, but it was overall entertaining. There were certain parts of the movie where I was like, okay, y'all could have cut some of these parts out. But I love the banter between um, Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham. I would love to see them have more of that chemistry. I don't know if they'll appear in the next Fast and the Furious movies. I know they're not in part nine. I don't know if they'll appear in part 10. But um, if they don't, at least we have this world to look forward to. And they did say, you, um, from what I've heard, I heard them say that they're going to expand that universe. So um, the rumors of Keanu Reeves possibly appearing in the sequel, I would look forward to. I think that'd be a great idea. First, of, as the villain, basically. So they say, like, he... The rumor is he may play, I mean, who else would he play, in my opinion, because they've they've established this world already. So I would think that they would have him play that shadowy figure that we hear, we don't get to see, and he could be a part of that. He could be the major villain of, um, of the franchise. And I think that would be perfect, because we've never really seen Keanu Reeves play villain, except... In Man of Tai Chi, he was kind of a villainous character. But I really want to see him, like, chew the scenery and really go balls to the wall with that role. And David Leach directed um, Keanu in the first John Wick movie. The second and the third one were filmed by um, Chad Stahelski. Um, David Leach went off and directed the other... Like, went off and directed other movies. Like, he did... Um, what the hell was the movie? He did um the sequel to Deadpool, and he did Atomic Blonde, and he did a couple of other movies. So it would be cool to see, in my opinion, I would love to see Keanu Reeves take on a role as a villainous character. We could definitely get him fighting um, Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham, since all three pretty much do a lot of their own fight sequences. As far as the stunts go... Keanu Reeves says he's not a stunt guy. He's a um, he. He says I do all the fights. Like whenever he talks about um, the John Wick franchise, he pretty much will give credit where it is. He says all the stunt stuff I don't do that. I do all the action stuff. So basically, I'm in there. I'm shooting the guns. I'm doing the 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 close up fight choreography, and I'm doing all that stuff. But any of the crazy stunts, like anything that's gonna cause injury, he lets the stunt guys pretty much go in and do all that. And I feel like. That's how you last long in this business if you kind of if you pretty much allow 
let the stunt guys do all the other stuff. And then I'm going to just come in so I can continue to do these movies well into my mid, which well, he is in his mid-50s, 